Mumbai, the city of dreams is not only India's most expensive real estate market, it is also amongst the world's most expensive. Land is a scarce commodity in this city. So how does one make more housing at the right price available in Mumbai? Now amongst the many suggestions put forth by experts, one which has been highlighted by India Sadhvi's International Realty is the pressing need to do away with hefty premiums that the state charges for conversion of leasehold property to freehold. Now, today's show, we will discuss the key findings and recommendations of the white paper, why leasehold property is shackling Mumbai's real estate potential. Before we dive into the discussion, here's a quick explainer. Property in India can be of two types, either freehold or leasehold. Freehold property, as the name suggests, is a property that is free of any kind of encumbrances or hold. Any individual or association who owns the building also owns the land it is built on. The owner controls every aspect of the property. He or she can sell the property, lease it, make changes to the property or renovate it without being answerable to anyone. Leasehold properties are exactly the opposite. They are properties you don't outrightly own but lease, especially the land on which the property is built. The lease periods may vary between 30 years to 99 years. As an occupant, you can use the property or building during the lease period, but you cannot claim rights on the land. You cannot sell it or make any changes to the building. Now, it is natural that freehold properties tend to have a higher market value and of course, bank finance is easy to come by for sale and purchase of such properties. Moving on to now Mumbai specific issues. Some estimates say that two-thirds of Mumbai land is leasehold under nine different types of leases. For today's discussion, we are focusing on collector's land that houses around 3,000 housing societies. Where are these land parcels? We'll come to that in a little bit, but important to understand that these were allotted between 1950s and 1980s by the government, state government, to promote the cooperative movement in the state. Majority of such housing societies and collectors' land are located in prime areas including Nariman Point, Churchgate, Kalanagar, Dadar, Chembur and Vadala. The residents living in buildings built on leasehold collectors' land have lobbied several years for conversion of leasehold land into freehold. And in 2016, the state government under Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis's leadership amended the Maharashtra Land Revenue Code allowing the conversion of leasehold to freehold by paying a premium to the government. But the government to date has a complicated process to grant permissions for the transfer sale and even redevelopment of properties on this collector's land. Most importantly, the premium the state charges for such conversion is a whopping 60% of the ready reckoner rate. Most of the current residents living in buildings on leasehold properties cannot afford to pay such high premiums. So the sale and redevelopment of such properties is stalled. The state government did come out with a reduced 10 to 25% conversion charge scheme between March 2019 to March 2021. But very few owners came forward. And now the conversion premiums are back to 60 to 70% of the ready reckoner rates. With Devendra Fadnavis back in the driving seat in the reconstituted Maharashtra government is the perfect time to discuss a possible solution to this. Joining me on the show, Rajesh Narayan Gupta, Managing Partner, SNG and Partners, Samir Saran, Managing Partner, India Sadhbi's International Realty and Dhawal Ajmera, Director, Ajmera Realty and Infra. Let me get a legal perspective first. Rajesh, Mr. Fadnavis has been, you know, a big advocate of ending this British legacy where Indians were leased lands as Bhumidars and not as Bhumi Swamis. Do you believe that this is something which must change today? Um, and he should now take steps to bring back maybe the way forward on changing this leasehold to freehold. Well, thanks for this. I personally feel that the leasehold system which is continuing in India is part of the British era RKA clause and rules where they wanted to have this control mentality. So in my opinion, this should be done away with. The government should do what they are good at, you know, legislating and developing the country as a whole. But so far as the real estate is concerned, it should be left to be unlocked by the developers, by the financiers, by the bankers, not only for the people who buy, but also under the policy where the affordable housing is being promoted. Unless these charges are brought down to significantly to affordable levels, 
it is very difficult to buy property in Bombay. So today, it is not only cumbersome, but also very expensive to convert the leasehold right into freehold. And yes, this should be done away with or the charges should be brought to significantly lower levels. All right. Sameer, you've said in the white paper that today sellers are required to either take permission from the lesser authorities for changes in individual ownership or pay conversion charges of 60 to 70 percent. As is, I mean, if you look at what's happened between 1950 to now, collector's land has become very expensive. These are some of the prime locations and it's almost impossible for uh, the for most people to afford it, isn't it? Only the very rich can afford a premium even at 25%. So Manisha, thank you for that. Um, I think you're absolutely correct uh, in, in, in your assertion. Uh, and, and you also correctly stated that in 2019, when the, uh, when the ready rectal rate uh, premium to be paid was actually brought down, there were 19 applicants out of a potential 1,250 people who actually applied for it. Uh, if we look at the people who actually paid up for it, uh, whether it was Mr. R.K. Dhamani, uh, Mr. Hiranandani, or Rustamji, all these names are more attuned to you know high net worths over here who can actually afford to pay or had a motive to pay, whether it be part of um, you know sentimentality towards the property or, or something else. So absolutely correct. Uh, this this is something that only people of a certain net worth have been able to take forward, apply for. Uh, you know, to navigate the entire process and actually make the pay. Hmm. Dhawan, what's your view? Because you need to, you know, developers like you yourself have to come forward when the conversion premiums are lowered and then actually take these societies up for redevelopment and there will be some potential. But the last time the conversion premiums were lowered, I mean, they were lowered from 60% to between 10 and 25%. There was hardly any response. Uh, does that mean that they need to go down lower or was it just a pandemic situation and you believe that if it's opened up again at 25 percent you will come forward i personally believe that you know this kind of premiums which have been charged are are you know really uncalled for because <clears throat> today when we are doing a development you have to understand it is there are a lot of other premiums which anyways the government is charging in terms of premium fsi fungible open space uh, staircase lift and all that etc so that makes the project anyways very very uh, expensive uh, while uh, we saw that when these premiums were reduced last year to 50 percent there was an upsurge in terms of the premiums which were being paid by developers to make this project more viable and there were a lot of demand which had come in at that point in time so my thing is today when there is a collector land when there are societies which have already been developed there are people already living if you expect them now to convert it and make it on an outright basis, it's, it's according to me, it's not, you know, they, they, they should be, you know, run away with a, uh, you know, this premium of any percentage. You may take a probably a section of a land or a percentage of a land and make it an easy process rather than, rather than making it a very cumbersome mm -hmm. process. And by I'm taking, you know, these kind of premium, you are anyways getting money through other premiums, as I said earlier, plus there's a perpetuity of the property tax which is coming because because of this there is no redevelopment happening today a building with one fsi has a potential of going up to maximum four or five so you see are you anyways adding four to five times of the property tax in that particular land hmm. plus you're getting premiums then why add on one more conversion rate and make it more you know this is just not making any commercial sense and so that I agree with you on most of the things you've said. So here's my question then, Dhawal. At what level should should these premiums be brought down to 5%? Because knowing the state government, they, it's not going to leave its pound of flesh. It'll definitely want some money out of it. Where do you think is a rational amount? I know that, uh, you know, homeowners are already paying a lot of taxes, so are developers. But if the state government were to charge, let's say, 5%, would, would that entice developers like you to come forward? Well, uh, yes, 5% on a you know, look looks very good. I mean, overall picture looks good, but I think it all depends on land to land and different areas where these uh, properties are. Rajesh, you've said that, uh, you know, you actually sent me a document which said that, look, this has completely been done away with in most of the parts of the world. And maybe we shouldn't even charge more than 1% because it should only cover administrative fee of the state government for whatever is required for the, the paperwork which is required. Do you believe that, uh, you know, why even have this charge? 
So, Manish, I strongly feel that because, as I just said, the government should be the custodian of the land record, first of all. So, this 1 or 2% should be taken because people have died, the properties have changed hands. When the freehold happens, they have to put the records in place that who is the current owner. Tomorrow, because of blockchain tokenization may happen in real estate, they want to have the records. So, only for record keeping, whatever is required, administratively, that should be done. All rest should be left with because government, as it is charging the various GST, taxes, development fee, completion fee, at times you do buy the FSI, even that is being sold for a high premium. The government, as it is making substantial money. So now how do you unlock the value in lands if got so much is required to pay to the government towards freehold itself? But unless a freehold happens, you can't freely sell the property. Mm. You have, each development requires builders, developers to go to the bank to take finance. You can't mortgage unless it's freehold. Permission to mortgage itself takes substantial time and again it's a cost uh, towards mortgage deed and stamp duty and all that. So I think a lot of duplicacy of effort and cost is happening at all possible levels. Some rationalization should happen and rationalization should be in a way that you know, this legacy department which are there only charging these hefty amounts and why this, I mean, government should still consider. So there was some positive development last time when Mr. Fadnavis had lowered it or he wanted to relook into this. I really hope this happens because otherwise the unlocking of such large real estate, we are talking of some over 3,000 societies in Bombay alone. So this can't happen unless some realistic look is uh, there on, on this entire matter. Mm. Uh, Sameer, good point made by uh, both the panelists and of course the fact that even as you unlock this land, your FAR will go from 1 to 4. So you have revenue you will uh, collect from there and Maharashtra government does have a precedent, isn't it? Just look at what happened when the stamp duty waiver and reduction went. Uh, it was a bumper revenue collection for Maharashtra government. Today, we were just to bring these conversion premiums down to, let's say, anywhere between 1 to 5 percent. Um, the government is only going to have a win-win situation. Do you believe that? So, Manisha, I do believe that. Uh, you know, one can have a, a stick and one can be have a profiteering motive. But I think we need to have the carrot as well, and that's the incentive, and that's uh, what we need to try and capture getting uh, you know a reduced uh, premium here is, is a win-win all round. I think the Maharashtra government has been uh, very progressive uh, since 2016 at least you know in everything you've said in a chronological order they moved towards uh, improving the scenario for real estate uh, and which is why also today you see so many transactions happening in Mumbai and at such high values. Now the I think the essence over here is and we've made some recommendations uh, you know addressing this uh, one is, of course, the premium and the premium value. Uh, the second is also the processes around the premium, uh, whether it is allowing for a longer period of time, whether it's allowing uh, societies, you know, should it be 75% of the society or 51% of the society to decide to move ahead with it. Um, there are a number of other uh, things also in terms of better publicly uh, putting it out there in terms of that, you know, this is the premium process, this is how it should be done. And, and these are rates. And I, and I think that this is going to be a win-win for the government. Uh, they've got substantial uh, records and sales as a result of the rebate against the registration charges and the stamp duty. Right. And again, in this particular case, it's going to be a win-win all round. Mm. Lower premiums means more developers coming onto the play. It means uh, engagement of real estate, jobs being created. So I, I see this as a win-win for everybody all round. Uh, Dhawar, my last question on this discussion, there are some activists and experts that I've spoken to who believe that developers in Mumbai don't want conversion premiums to be lowered. Um, is that really correct or is it just a myth? According to them, you know, that will probably unleash a lot more inventory and probably put pressure on prices and, you know, it's not in, in the developer's uh, favor, this, this change. I personally don't believe that, Manisha, because... I give you a small example. If you see last year, if there was, you know, some maybe some pound of developers who wanted, who probably didn't even want the premiums to go down, and still, uh, you know, if there was a lobby, it could have been even then that time. Otherwise, because maybe some may benefit, rest of the projects don't become viable. It was done, and fifty percent was, you know, availed by everybody from a small developer to a big developer. So I don't think, because honestly speaking, Mumbai as a market, there is a lot of potential. People really want to, you know, uh, buy apartments or houses or commercial in this city. There is a lot of infrastructure which is already happening now. 
I think Mumbai has a tremendous potential. So if every developer works 24 by 7, still there is a lot of work available for everyone. So I don't think there can be, uh, you know, any developer or a you know group of developers, or whoever they call it, trying to stop this and you know unleashing the collector land or uh, whatever the lease premium. That's 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 not something which I personally believe. All right, on that note, I'm going to conclude. So developers are willing to come forward and of course, it's, it will lead to better revenues for the state. So the conversion of collectors land into freehold land will be a situation which is positive for just about everybody, especially the residents who live here. There is a sense of insecurity that, you know, the land that I own my apartment in isn't really mine. And of course, it will create additional housing stock for the maximum city. Samir Saran, Rajesh and Dabal, thank you very much for joining me today. On the other side, we are going to understand the changing housing preferences of young India from an author who's penned an entire book on real estate. And because these books are few and far in between, we have to put the spotlight on it.